This is Scott Campbell with Morris Home Inspections. I'm going to do a little presentation here on thermal imaging. As usual, all of our inspectors are background verified, ASHI inspectors, and we have been certified residential thermographer trained by Monroe Infrared. We use the FLIR E8. It's a nice handheld camera. Uh, it's very efficient, very good camera for its size. Um, it's kind of a middle of the road, I would say. Certainly a heck of a lot better than the ones that attach to your phone. Not as good as the large commercial ones that they use for buildings and whatnot. All right, so let's get started here. What does thermal imaging do? Well, first of all, it allows you to see temperature differentials. All right, so um, it is not x-ray vision. I cannot see through walls with this. What it does do, like I said, is allow you to pick up some things you may not see with the naked eye or confirm things that you suspect. This is an old house with a hardwood ceiling. Now you can see the water stains on there. They look kind of dry, um, but when you shoot them with the thermal imaging camera, here you go. So you're seeing the cool spots. What allows me to see that is evaporation. So when water evaporates, it cools. So when you have leaks, what you're seeing is those cool temperatures and that is from evaporation. So there I can tell that there's definitely some wet spots there. This one was a little bit more obvious. I probably didn't need to use the thermal imaging camera here. However, I like to use it just to confirm my suspicions. Once again, could see the leak. Uh, had a hard time getting to this area because of where it was located. I did hit it with the moisture meter. However, uh, most home inspectors know that most moisture meters are notoriously glitchy, uh, possibly inaccurate. So I usually like to use my thermal imaging camera in conjunction with the moisture meter. And you can see here, the problem is uh, a little bit more spread out than what meets the naked eye there. So that was pretty helpful. And in this instance, there was nothing visible to the naked eye. I scan the walls and ceilings uh, in a room before I leave and this is what popped up. So you can just see that little bit of coolness there. A little bit there and down there on the floor when I put my moisture meter here and here it was elevated I would have not probably spotted this without the thermal imaging camera because it hadn't rained here in I think a couple days and so it wasn't blatantly obvious right out of the gate uh, but the thermal imaging camera really helped me pick that up all right so again um, something not obvious to the naked eye. It was hard to get above this tray ceiling, but it was not difficult for the thermal imaging camera to spot numerous, what we call thermal anomalies, right? Right there, right there, right there. Warm spots. These actually were um, areas of missing insulation. So, not obvious to the naked eye, obvious to the thermal imaging camera. Now, this one is a little bit more tricky. So, this was a condo. Uh, so, I'm not able to get in this attic because it really is like a middle level condo. And so, really right above this is another unit. There's nothing really visible going on here. Due to the pattern of this being in kind of a line like there, I was a little bit hesitant to call this insulation. So I called it a thermal anomaly 
you could see the ceiling joist there and your duct is right in this area here uh, my guess is that it was a heating duct i should have said the register is right here it was a hvac duct running through this area that was not insulated and they didn't pack in insulation around it um, it was winter uh, and so we were testing the heat and i think that that metal duct was heating up the areas that weren't insulated here which is why you're seeing this again can't confirm without cutting into the ceiling uh, because there's no access there but that was my guess so one of the reasons we call thing we just call things out as a thermal anomaly and and say what the problem possibly is is because i don't get to drill into these things or pull them out on the other hand this is brand new construction by the way okay this was um a room on the top left corner of the home this was on the front right so this was one room this was another room this room when i walked into it was very warm so initially i thought huh maybe they didn't hook up the duct to the register here shot it with my camera and this is what i found right so insulated walls not insulated walls missing insulation missing insulation missing insulation the builder happened to be on site and I showed him what I was looking at. And he says, well, there's no way there's no insulation in those walls. Our subcontractors send us pictures of every wall that they insulate. I said, well, you may want to go back and look at these pictures. Come to find out uh, a couple days later, the buyer was there with the report. The builder drilled into the wall and lo and behold, there was no insulation. Yeah, I, I probably could have told him that. But we let them find out for themselves because I don't get to drill into the wall. But this might have been a battle that that buyer was fighting forever because unless they had this camera, all they would have been able to say was, well, it was hotter in this room than all the other ones. And the builders will say things like, oh, well, you know, maybe it's at the far end of the run or it gets a lot of sun exposure, blah, 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 blah. But this is pretty much definitive proof that neither one of those are the issue. all right so here we are again we're uh in a home not a new home and i got some water stains here on the ceiling some moisture stains so your first inclination would be well it's a leak so you scan it with a thermal imaging camera and you think to yourself oh, leaks are cold because of evaporation that's correct this is a warm spot so uh, when i was in the attic i went over to this area and what had happened was when they fixed the leak they did not push the insulation back and so you got a warm spot that warm spot is a good uh, seven degrees higher than the rest of the area so you're reading it there it's at 85.3 that's the warm spot the lowest area um, by the way let me back up a second so this number here is telling you what you're reading in your target this number is telling you the highest reading that the camera is picking up in the whole screen. This one is the lowest reading that the camera is picking up in the whole screen. So this 76.1 is here and here at these cool spots where the air had been blowing. This area actually measured about 77 and a half, 78. So you're seeing a, you know, eight, seven to eight degree differential between this and this. That makes a difference when you're trying to heat that room. It definitely is an efficiency issue. All right, more efficiency issues. So here what you're looking at is uh, their wall transition. So this is a same, this is a different picture of the same room from different angles. And the warm spots you're seeing are basically a transition from the high wall to the low wall um, and that's where you're getting some some leakage there so there's not any insulation missing you're just kind of getting some air leakage there so is it an efficiency issue yeah absolutely all right so let's quickly go through some other um, uses for thermal imaging in a home inspection electrical issues 
What you're looking at here is the AFCI breakers. They're always warmer than the rest of the panel. They're reading at about 129 degrees. Now that's well within the tolerance of this, of these breakers in this setting. So we don't call that out as a defect. I'm just using this as an illustration. I have found a um, service entrance conductor before that was loose that read quite a bit higher than that. I just couldn't find that picture. Um, and so we called that out. And then here we're reading supply return temperatures to the HVAC to make sure that it is running the proper, proper temperature differentials. 125 degrees and higher, I call out. This one was 146. Yeah, that's hot. So I'll use my thermal imaging camera to measure that as well. This was an interesting one. So I was inspecting and saw this little mark here, uh, fungal growth. I thought I was going to find possibly some moisture intrusion, maybe from the flashing on the outside. This is a sliding glass door on a high rise condo leading to the beach. But what I found when I shot this was a warm spot. So not evaporation. What it ended up being is there was a gap there and the hot air outside was leaking through combining with the air conditioned air inside and causing a little bit of mold to uh, to grow there. So relatively easy fix. Obviously you want to take care of that mold, seal those gaps up and um, then you've taken care of your air gap. And this is not a home inspection picture. This is a hobby of mine, woodworking. I was making an epoxy table here and I was reading the temperature of the exothermic reaction of the epoxy as it hardened to make sure it didn't get too high. So it's kind of an interesting one. I have known people that use these hunting as well to locate animals, trails, things like that. Uh, I've also known other home inspectors that have found beehives or bee infestation behind walls in homes. Those, uh, all those bees packed together in a tight area will definitely give you a thermal anomaly. So I have never found that. So I didn't put it in this report, but I know that it has been done. And there you go. Once again, thanks for watching. Scott Campbell with Morris Home Inspections. Have a good one.